do you know the five meanings of multiplication? Now, I'm not talking about an algorithm or a number sentence. This isn't about how we calculate multiplication. It's the reasons why we multiply. Many of our students spend years in our math classes without ever really thinking about what multiplication is and how we use it in the real world. So if you want to help your students increase their conceptual understanding in math, get better at applying math to the world outside the classroom, and of course, have more success with word problems, you're going to want to watch this next video. Hi, I'm Jeff Lissandrello with Room to Discover. In this video, I'll show you all five meanings of multiplication, as well as the real world situations where we would use each one. And finally, how you can demonstrate each of these meanings using visual representations. The five meanings of multiplication are equal groups, area, multiplicative comparison, rate, and Cartesian product. I'll go into detail on each of the five meanings in just a minute, but first, here are two things to keep in mind that apply to all meanings of multiplication. The first has to do with vocabulary. When we multiply, the two numbers being multiplied are referred to as factors, and the result of the multiplication is called the product. The second thing to keep in mind is that each of these five meanings also applies to division. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about the five meanings of division in this video. Hopefully, that'll be something that I can put in a future video. But it's helpful enough just to know that division can also be known as an unknown factor problem. So when we multiply, we have two factors and we're looking for a product. When we divide, we have one of the factors and the product and we're looking for the other factor. So if you'd like to think about how to use equal groups, rates, Cartesian products, and so on with respect to division, just imagine that one factor is missing. Okay, so let's dive into the five meanings. The first meaning of multiplication is equal groups. And this is what we typically think of when we think of multiplication. One factor is the size of a group, and the second factor is the number of groups. The product is the total that we have all together. This meaning of multiplication is useful for counting large numbers. If we have a, you know, 100 baskets, each filled with eight apples, we can calculate the number of total apples using equal groups. Now, we typically introduce this in third grade. When students learn the word multiply, they learn that x is the multiplication symbol. But we actually build the foundations much earlier. Even as early as kindergarten, students will skip count, 3, 6, 9, 12. That provides a foundation for multiplying. Then in first and second grade, they'll add the same term, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. That's another foundation for multiplying. Um, and also in second grade, they'll, they'll build arrays, which is a, a critical conceptual foundation. Uh, with an array, they'll arrange a group of objects in rows and columns. So we might have... Uh, four circles with four circles with four circles and so on. Um, and we can start to think of that as multiplying the rows by the columns. The second meaning of multiplication is area, which is an incredibly useful understanding for more advanced math and for math applications. But unfortunately, too many students just think of area as a formula, L times W, or for a triangle, one half base times height. What they really need to understand is that that area is a measurement of a two-dimensional space. Now, when we're using the area meaning of multiplication, the factors are interchangeable. Each factor measures a length, and we multiply the two to find the product, which is the area or the size of the two-dimensional space. Now, the understanding of area also begins in second grade when students start to build arrays. By arranging shapes in rows and columns, we start to build that idea of dimensionality, of something being 3 by 4 or 4 by 8. You could imagine drawing a grid around all the objects to create a shape. And then if you actually remove the objects, then you have that space. And you could make the connection why an array of 4 objects by 8 objects is the same as measuring a shape that's 4 by 8. Now, when students understand area, they can apply it to a number of useful real-world situations like measuring the square footage of a house or measuring the size of a garden plot. An area also provides a foundation for higher-level math. Students can create area models to multiply two-digit numbers to deepen their understanding of fractions or decimals. 
area also provides a foundation for volume, which is measuring three-dimensional space, and calculating the area of shapes like squares and rectangles also helps students understand what's going on when we measure more complicated shapes like circles. The third meaning of multiplication is multiplicative comparison. This is the idea that something can be five times as big as something else, or even half as big as something else. This first gets introduced in fourth grade, where you'll see word problems like, you know, Billy has three times as many apples as Jamil, and you have to figure out how, much, how many apples Billy has. Um, but it becomes even more important when students multiply fractions in fifth grade, because that's basically what we're doing. If I say three times one third, right? Um, doing a multiplicative comparison. What is one third as big as three? And it's also foundational in middle school for ratio and proportion standards. With multiplicative comparison, one factor is the size of the original group. And then the other factor is what we call the scale factor. How much are we scaling it up or scaling it down? And then the product is the size of the other group. This can get particularly confusing because, for example, if I said that I have five apples and somebody has four times as many apples as me, altogether we have five times as many apples as I started with, right? The product would be the other person's number of apples, not the total. This is what can um, trip up students sometimes when solving word problems that, are, that have a multiplicative comparison but ask for the total. For this reason, bar models are often a useful strategy for representing multiplicative comparison because you can have you know, one segment represent a certain group and then show another group that's that many times bigger or half as big and so on. The fourth meaning of multiplication is rate. Now, this is probably the most challenging meaning of multiplication, but in some ways it's the most interesting. A rate is a ratio of things with different units. So usually a rate will be miles per hour or earnings dollars per hour. It's usually with respect to time, but not always. For example, I could say, you know, I eat eight ounces of trail mix for every mile that I hike. Then we're, we're comparing the trail mix to the miles. Um, but still, we could calculate based on the number of miles, multiply up to get the amount of trail mix that I ate. Part of what makes rates so challenging is that one of our factors is a fraction, and fraction is division. So we're actually combining multiplication and division, which are opposites. Let's look a little bit more at how that works. So I've set up a simple rate equation here, where I have 25 miles per hour times four hours equals y. Now, 25 doesn't look like a fraction, but it's actually the unit that's a fraction. It looks like a whole number because our denominator is one hour. This is what makes this a unit rate because it's 25 miles per one hour. In theory, I could have you know, 25 halves miles per hour if I was calculating the number of miles I traveled in two hours, but that's pretty unusual. So what I have to do here is multiply 25 times four to get y, which will give me the total distance. Now the calculation here is pretty simple, right? 25 times four equals 100. But what's tricky is how do we go from this unit and this unit to this unit? And that's where thinking about it as fractions comes into play. Since my units here are miles per hour, and I'm multiplying by the unit hours, these actually cancel out, and my final unit is miles. Now because rates are usually with respect to time, it can be a little more challenging to represent with a visual model. One great way to represent rate is to act something out. Um, a similar example is growing shapes. This is something that Joe Bowler came up with and I do it all the time with, with cubes. You can show uh, a relationship with a shape that grows over time, um, but it's also represented visually in slope. When we graph on the coordinate plane, slope is a visual representation of the rate. The fifth and final meaning of multiplication is what's called a Cartesian product. A Cartesian product is what we get when we pair objects from two different sets. For example, if I had three pairs of pants and three shirts, the product would be the total number of combinations I could create with one pair of pants and one shirt. 
So the factors in the Cartesian product are the size of each group, three pants, three shirts, and the product is the total number of combinations, in this case, which would be nine. You can represent Cartesian products visually in a table. So in this example, if I have uh, red pants, purple pants, and green pants, and then I have red shirt, purple shirt, green shirt, I can have a uh, red pants with a red shirt, I can do a purple pants with a red shirt, green pants with a red shirt, and so on, all together showing my nine combinations. This looks a lot like an array where my objects are arranged uh, into rows and columns to find the total number of combinations. For a deeper dive into combinations and how they relate to probability, uh, check out our video on dice rolling in Settlers of Catan. That's really the main application here with combinations is finding out probabilities. Uh, first, you have to know what are the total number of possibilities, that's your combinations, and then you can calculate, um, for example, if I said, what's the likelihood that I have red pants on? If I rotate through this, um, my red pants would be one third of the total, one of those rows. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you now feel more confident answering the question, how are we gonna use this outside of math class? At least when you're teaching multiplication and division. Now, if you're wondering how to build in meanings of multiplication into your math class, one way is just to wait for your students to ask the question and be ready for the answer. Another is to explicitly give direct instruction. Uh, next time you're teaching multiplication, give a mini lesson on what that meaning of multiplication is, how it applies to the real world, and how it applies to what they're about to learn. You could also introduce all five meanings of multiplication, tell them what they are, and then give them a bunch of problems and have your students match each problem to the meaning of multiplication. That will be a very um, engaging activity that they likely won't forget. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to take the next step in bringing conceptual math to your classroom, visit roomtodiscover.com slash online. There you'll find downloadable resources, our blog, as well as online workshops, online coaching, really everything you'll need to bring engaging conceptual math to your students. So thanks again, and I'll see you soon.